Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first load of Jeeps that I have bought from a viewer on the channel. I happened to upload a video and a guy's like, hey, you know, I got some Jeeps for sale if you're interested. So I thought, oh, heck yeah, email me. And uh, turns out that the guy's mother-in-law passed away. She was a Jeep racer back in the day. I believe he said ice racing. I can't quite recall. And these were some Jeeps that she had, you know, out in her backyard that were just project Jeeps. So there are four Jeeps total. There's one that's not here that's another CJ5. So we'll go ahead and go down the row and see what we got here. This one is a CJ3B. And there's also a brand new body kit for this that I have not shipped yet. Um, it's so far with drive that I couldn't possibly go there and back in a day. So I paid to have all this stuff shipped. And uh, I don't understand why they bought a new body kit because this tub, you know, at least for northern standards, is almost immaculate. I mean, yeah, it's got a little ding in there and, you know, maybe a little denting that could be hammered out out here. But, I mean, look at the corners and the floor of this thing. I mean, you just don't find stuff like this up here. And one telltale of uh, finding a nice body is it's still got this original seam down the center and it's still got the drain holes. Now if you look inside the floor, overall pretty solid. And the CJ3B does have the F-134 engine, it's overhead valve, but only the intake valves. Very odd design. But I went ahead and turned over this pulley and the engine does spin over. So I'm thinking, obviously, the thing had to have been, you know, worthy of restoration if they bought a new tub for it. It was running and driving, but it didn't have brakes, so the woman pulled it into her garage, ordered all the brake parts for it, and then she passed away. Unfortunately, so it never got finished, and then it sat for all these years. I believe she died eight years ago, and uh, they're just now cleaning out that property. But you can tell this thing is just gorgeous. I mean, out of all the Jeeps I bought, these three have got to be some of the most solid that I've ever owned, because you just don't find things like this up here. And They actually came from uh, Branson, Missouri. So definitely a little more southern than what we're used to. I mean, look at this thing. The floors are even holding water. We aren't used to that up here. It's got decent seats in it. You know, we got a little radio going on. This little padding is still really nice. Good windshield. I mean, this thing is definitely a survivor. And it's got these awesome looking wheels. This thing is so new that it's actually got a hood release. The only downside to this CJ5 is that it is an F-head engine and essentially if you kind of set this one next to this one, same axles, same engine, same tranny, same transfer case, the only difference is the funny fenders right here. I'm assuming this one was a decent runner when it was parked so we're going to go ahead and try to get this one running as well. This is a first for me, I've actually never owned a DJ3A so from the outside it looks like a standard CJ3A. The difference is that these are a two-wheel drive Jeep. Again, overall super solid Jeep. The only kind of bad spot is right here on the driver's side where someone's obviously tried to repair it. What's weird is it still has the drain holes right here. I'm assuming they probably hit it with something and tried to do a poor patch job. But if you go around the whole side of this thing, super, super solid. Oh, here's another difference of the DJs is that they have no tailgate, so it's all solid, which I really like this design better anyways, because in my opinion, the tailgates are kind of useless on these things. Really nice floors on the inside, and especially the front. When I was out here power washing this thing, because it had just barnacles all over it, it was actually filling up with the water on this side, and I was trying to scoop it out with my hand, which is definitely not something that I'm used to. Judging by the shifter cover here, it looks like they might have notched it out for an overdrive, so that's kind of interesting. We do have some spare CJ5 style front fenders, a spare hood. So we got a front, it's either Dana 25 or 27. If I had a hunch, I'd say it's a 27. But here's what I just realized filming this thing. Check it out, the axle's offset, all right? And it's flanged. This is one of the holy grail flanged offset Dana 44s. This is not where a hub slides onto a key. This thing is axle straight into there, and it seems to turn over pretty well. I'm gonna have to go ahead and check what gear ratio this thing is because I've, ooh, wait, here's the tag. 373. Excellent to keep around for spare parts, or if I need an axle shaft, or this one turns out to be better than the one that I do have sitting on the shelf, this is gonna be awesome. 
I cannot believe that we got one of these things. That is insane. I mean, these are only 70 to 71. Really hard to find if you're needing one, and that's awesome. Well, it's literally raining on my parade. I've already went ahead and power washed the barnacles off that one. Power washed that one. That one didn't need it at all. Um, I don't have any plants with this one over here just because it's, you know, it's a really nice Jeep, but there's just nothing that I have use for it. I'm pretty much selling to offset the cost of shipping these things because I probably got almost two grand in shipping by the time I get all four and a half of them here. This one, like I said, we're going to try to get running, and then same thing with this one. And I'm still waiting for someone to ship the other CJ5 and the CJ3B body, but hopefully that'll come within the next week. And the weather holds out. The last shipment came in today, and one of the nicest surprises I've ever had by an old Willys is that uh, they shipped this body kit not on the pallet, but on a new Harbor Freight trailer. This is one of those trailers that you buy at Harbor Freight and then you assemble it yourself. And it looks like it was brand new and just sat out in the sun, got a little chalky up front, but it'll buff right out. And it actually came with a title as well, which is pretty neat. And the whole thing, you unhook it on the front and then it tips. So I'm actually thinking about keeping this thing, buying a set of fenders for it, some trailer wiring, and then this will be great for hauling like engines or little miscellaneous things, maybe even an ATV. Every time I see one of these brand new body kits, I wonder why didn't I just start off with one of these when I was building the sub, but anyways, here she is. Really, really nice. The only problem with these Omics Ada bodies is that the mounting holes for everything just kind of aren't in the right spot. Like I know the pedal holes, you always have to mess with those and like the fuel filler hole, I've seen people moving those around, just little things like that. The last piece of the puzzle is indeed another CJ5. This one is either 70 or 71. I know that because it's got the Holy Grail flange Dana 44 rear axle. See, it's flat on the side. And it is the passenger offset, which works with the Dana 18 transfer case. It's one of those axles that are pretty rare, and when you find them, they're valuable. But the funny thing is, I've actually found three of these in the last month. And I've got two of them on the shelf. I don't need a third one, so we're going to go ahead and leave that one in here. This Jeep has a bunch of junk inside it, actually. But it does have another Dauntless 225 V6 engine sitting in there. Who knows what's under all that bacteria. The Jeep has a Dauntless V6 in it with an accompanying mouse nest. Now this engine does turn over. Unfortunately, the 3B's got a stock valve, so the engine's just not gonna run with one of the cylinders not having compression. So all I've done is gone ahead and just reassembled it, and it looks 10 times better than when it came here. Uh, with all the junk out of the bed of it, and the front body on, the roll bar back where it goes. And this thing would make a really nice project for someone. And look at this, the hat channels are all intact. Brand new steering wheel. Definitely a good project for somebody. Well, here's the last one all cleaned up, the 7071 CJ5. All I did was took all the trash out of the inside, power washed all the barnacles off of it. The engine does spin over in this thing. I did not try to get it running. I just kind of put a wrench on the end of the crank, made sure that it did spin over because I truthfully don't have any desire to work on this one. Uh, if I try to get all these running, which was my original plan, I could have weeks of time put into these.